Protect yourself and be stylish, and let's see how we can add custom trim patterns and a trim material to Minecraft. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below, with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. Oh, all right. We found ourselves back in Shelly once more, and in this tutorial, we're gonna be adding a custom trim material and a custom trim pattern to Minecraft. Absolutely amazing. I believe this is a first time. I think so. I actually think it is. Whatever the case may be, though, it is going to be absolutely spectacular. The first thing that's quite important here is that, number one, you will have to have data gen for this. Otherwise, it's not going to work because for this, we need to basically generate JSON files. Now, in theory, of course, you can also make those JSON files manually, add them manually to, to the data folder and things like that. That would also work. Uh, all of the code as well as the JSON files and everything is, of course, linked down below in the GitHub repository so you can double check it there. Also, another limitation that is sadly going to be the case is that your custom armor trim and material are most likely not going to be compatible with armors and or trim materials and or patterns from other mods. That's just a thing that is most likely not going to work. It might work, but probably not. So just keep that in mind that it's probably going to be a limitation here. But let's just see how we can add this. So in our tutorial mode package, we're going to right click new package called trim. And there we want to create two new Java classes. The first is the mod trim materials class. And the second one is going to be the mod trim patterns class. Mod trim patterns. There we go. Now in this case, we will copy over the contents of both of these. However, you will find that they are fairly straightforward, all things considered, right? And also, as always, all of the code is available down below. I'm going to start with the trim material. The trim material obviously being whatever the trim is made out of. In our case, we're just going to add Alexandroid over here. And we're going to actually start at the bottom to sort of look at this class. So the first thing you have here is the register method. This is just a simple register method that is always going to look the same, basically. And you have this once in your custom mod trim material class, and that is it. So this basically just makes sure that the trim material is created properly at, with a correct name, right, with an item associated with it, with the model item index, or the item model index, rather. And that is actually quite an important piece, too. I'm going to explain that in a second. A translatable description over here, as well as a proper style, and that is basically it. And then it registers this. And this register method is called inside of the bootstrap method. If the bootstrap method you also only have once, however, inside of it, you would have as many register calls as you would have custom trim materials, right? So if you had four custom trim materials, then this is roughly how it would look like. And then, of, of course, also each of them would have a resource key. The resource key here is the second parameter, and that basically is just a resource key of a specific type. In this case, a trim material with a specific name over here, which is just tutorial mod over here, colon Alexandrite, right? That is basically the resource location. The item that we define right here is basically the item that should be, well, made into this material, right? So if we put in an Alexandrite into the smithing table, then that is the trim material we get out of it. The code, the text color over here is the text color when you hover over the armor that has trimmed with this material, that has been trimmed with this material, and the model index is very strange. And that is going to be, if we actually take a look at our already made item models right here, we can see that this is going to be a redstone. I don't think redstone quite works. I think that emerald, or rather diamond, would be a bit better. So the idea is that depending on the model index you put in there, right? So the model index right here, that determines the texture put on the item's textures, right? So, or the color rather. So we know that when we trim something with redstone, then it's going to add a little red line on the item of the, or let's say the helmet, right? Or the chest plate, it adds like a little bit of a red line. But if we were to do quartz, it would add a white line. If we add lapis, it would add a blue line. And the idea is that you can only choose from those. You can add your own ones. There's probably a way to add them. However, that is way out of the scope of this tutorial. In our case, we're just going to use one of the ones that already exists Usually, there is one that roughly works, right? I mean, we had, so uh, in, in Fabric, I'm using Pink Garnet. We had Amethyst right there. Here, I'm using Alexandrite, so we're using the Diamond. And in Neoforge, we have Bismuth. I think Copper or something like that is probably going to work in that case. So that is going to be that, and this is basically how the Mod Trim Materials class works. In terms of the trim patterns, we're going to copy this over with, and it's going to have one issue or one error, let's say, but it's going to be very easily fixable. So we can see this is now the pattern. So this is the way that it is laid out on your 3D armor, right? This is the custom trim pattern. In our case, we're going to have the Kauten pattern because 
I didn't come up with anything better. That's just the, the relevant truth over here. You can see that the register method looks almost exactly the same as with the trim material class over here because it's basically the same except it's a trim pattern in this case. And a similar thing goes where we're going to have an item that is associated with it. And you can see here in the register method call that that is the Kalpen smithing template because of course we need to add a custom template to actually, well, make a custom trim pattern. So that is basically the th next thing we're going to do. So in the item package, we're going to add that item and then this error will be fixed and then we'll continue with a bunch of other things. So first and foremost, over here in the mod items class is going to be very strange, actually. It's going to be a public static final registry object. That's still all normal of type item, all still normal, called the count underscore smithing underscore template. And you can see now this has been fixed as well. And this is going to be equal to the items deferred register dot create that register equal to the items deferred register dot register. And then the name here is going to be Calpen underscore armor underscore trim underscore smithing underscore template template. There we go. And this is going to be a supplier. And then quite important, a smithing template item dot create armor trim template passing in a resource location from namespace passing in tutorial mod dot mod ID. Then the name here is Kalpen. Very importantly, that the namespace, or rather the resource location given right here, has to match basically the resource location given right here. So those two have to match, otherwise it's not going to work. With this done, we can add this to the creative mode tab. That's going to be the Kalpen smithing template over here. And we can also add an item model for it. Very straightforward. This is a basic item, so nothing too crazy. With that, the item is done. We can add a translation for it. That's this translation, obviously very straightforward. However, there's also another translation that we need to add, and that is for the trim pattern as well as the trim material. Now, those two are going to go at the very bottom over here just because I want to. And you can see they are trim underscore pattern dot tutorial mode dot Kalpen, which is the trim pattern over here, Kalpen armor trim. And the other one is just the Alexandrite material. So you can see also fairly straightforward, all things considered. The easy texture is going to be the item, and that is, of course, the Kalpen Armor Trim, uh, Armor Smith Trim uh, Template. Oh my lord. Well, basically, it's the Kalpen Armor Trim Smithing Template.png. There you go. This, including all the other textures, are, of course, available down below, so no issues there at all. And when I say other textures, what does that mean? Well, wait a second. Our trims have to be defined somehow. Exactly. And that is going to be happening in the Textures folder. So in the Textures folder, we're going to right-click New Directory called Trim. Instead, there are two new directories. The first one called color underscore palettes, making sure color is the, the American spelling and then palettes over here. Double check the spelling is correct. It's extremely important. Once again, in the trim, right click a new directory called models. And inside of the models folder, a new directory called armor. Once again, American spelling. And inside of the color palettes, I'm going to copy over the alexandrite.png over here. I'm going to show this in a second. And into the armor, I'm going to copy over Kalpen underscore leggings and Kalpen.png. So the Kalpen one is the custom trim pattern over here. You can see there's a K in here and, you know, I changed it up a little bit. And then in the leggings, you know, it just, I changed it up just a tiny bit too, but that is basically it. And then when it comes to the color palette, that is the color palette of Alexandroid. Even though it might look a little bit strange, it is actually the color Alexandrite. The Alexandrite color palette, as you can see, it basically goes in there. I could have also chosen only to, you know, it to be blue, but it's going to be fine. It's going to be okay in this sense. And this is, of course, just for an example here. You should, of course, make your own custom stuff. Highly recommended to also go down to the external libraries and you can go down to Client Extra 121.1 or whatever your version might be. Assets, Minecraft, Textures. You can go to trims and here is everything we want to see. For example, what about the diamond color palette? There we go. We even have a custom color palette that you could use and just recolor, right? And then you have a custom color over here. I didn't, I choose to not do that because why would I? That's going to be fine. And here we can also see all of the different patterns over here. So those are also really freaking cool. Highly recommended to basically check those out and you can then well, change those up a little bit and create your own custom patterns and your own custom materials, which is really freaking cool. But we're not done quite just yet in the assets folder because the next thing is extremely important in the assets folder. We need to create a new directory called Minecraft. Inside of there, we need to create another new directory. So in the Minecraft directory, right click new directory called Atlases. So the plural of Atlas. And inside of there, a new JSON file is going to be copied over armor underscore trims dot JSON. This is going to be available to you down below in the GitHub repository. And this is extremely important that this is set correctly and that it has the correct things added to it. So the correct things in this case are number one here in the palleted permutations, we want 
tutorial mod colon trims slash models slash armor slash kalpen and then here also to the kalpen leggings this points to the two textures that we've added right down here right so those are these two textures that are now added to the permutation here and then the palette key for the palettes the permutation here is going to be alexandrite and this points to once again tutorial mod colon trims color underscore palettes slash alexandrite so this points to this texture if you do not have this then nev nothing's going to work and it is just well you're just going to get basically a missing texture texture and that is not what you want this is extremely important that this is situated correctly i basically say, tell you to double triple quadruple check all the you know the relevant uh, textures and that everything is situated correctly that the that there's no typos it's super easy to make a typo in here and then something not work so keep that in mind with that done, we can now take both the material as well as the pattern classes and actually make some data gen with it. To do this, we're going to go to the data gen package and right click new Java class called the mod data pack entries class. And this is going to extend the data pack built in entries provider. We're going to hover over this and create constructor matching super. We're going to change this up a little bit because the set of mod IDs we're just going to remove and we're just going to make a custom set. So set dot of and then tutorial mod tutorial mod dot mod ID. There we go. And then at the very beginning over here, we actually want to do something else. And that is a public static final. This is a registry set builder. I'm going to call this the builder. This is going to be equal to a new registry set builder. And then we're going to add registries dot trim underscore material with mod trim materials colon colon bootstrap. Then we're going to call another add over here with registries dot trim pattern. And this is going to be trim mod trim patterns colon colon bootstrap end it with a semicolon and then we're going to add this as a third parameter here and then this registries actually has to be changed this is correct that's why it's important to choose the correct constructor but that's fine so basically if you get this issue complete will future of type holder lookup dot provider in this case and then there's no more issues present if you have any issues double check the github repository down below and then you should be good to go then we want to go to the data generators class and we're just going to add this here. It's fine to be added at the very bottom. Generator.add provider event.include server. Very important. New mod data pack entries and then passing in the pack output and then passing in the lookup provider. With that, we basically have it done and everything is added overall. Like I said, it's nothing too crazy, right? Overall, it's nothing too, you know, it's not that complicated. However, like I said, it's very, very important that you have the atlases defined, you know, everything in the correct folders and things like that, and then you should be good to go. And when I say we're done, I'm of course speak that we're not done yet because we still need to add some item tags. Crazy enough, but yes, this is extremely important, just like we have with the trimmable armor so that we can actually put it into the smithing table. We need to also add both the material as well as the template. So we want to say tag and then say item tags dot trim materials. We're going to do trim materials over here dot add. We're going to add mod items dot alexandrite dot get. That's good. And then we're going to call the tag again item tags dot. And it's going to be the trim pattern or rather the trim templates actually trim templates dot add. And here are mod items dot kalpen smithing template dot get and we're still not done quite just yet because for the custom smithing for our template we actually need a custom recipe too it's very strange but that's just going to be the case so inside of here we're going to call these tr the trim smithing method passing the recipe output passing in mod items dot kalpen smithing template dot get and then making a new resource location from namespace and path tutorial mod dot mod id and then here it's going to be count once again the resource location right here should be the same that we have defined in the pattern as well as with that we've defined in the mod item right here if all of those match then you're basically good to go and we can now run the data gen over here which is going to generate us all of the json files that we need i'm going to actually show the ones for the trims because like i said in theory yes you could also just make those manually that would be fine but I do think that this is just going to be a little bit easier. So you can see this is the one for the material. Let's just close everything else. And this is the one for the material. Fairly straightforward, all things considered. And then for the pattern, a similar, you know, pattern emerges, so to speak. It's very similar and also quite simple, all things considered. But that's everything we need. So let's jump into the game and see if it works. All right, friends, we're back in Minecraft. And let's just see and take a look. First of all, take the Kalpen Smithing template and let's just add it here. And we got a winner over here, of course. There is something going on. Well, we're going to figure this out in just a second. Let's just see if I can get another template over here. 
and it, whether or not at least the Alexandrite works. And this one doesn't work either. Well, that goes to show that, um, yeah, you should definitely double check your spelling because this is trim and it has to be called trims. And how do we know this? Look at this guy. Trims, trims. Well, there you go. This is just a cautionary tale. Obviously, this is all planned, right? This was never, this would never happen to me. <laughs> no, but like, seriously though, this is what I'm saying, right? This is why you always, always, always double, triple, quadruple check all your spelling. It is so easy to make a typo somewhere and then something does not work. But now I'm super confident because obviously now this all checks out, right? Trims, models, armor, whatever it might be. Trims, models, armor. We're all going to be good to go. So now let's jump into the game again and let's actually see this with a proper texture this time. All right, and here we are and let's just take a look right here and we can see there we freaking go. It absolutely works just like we would expect it to. We can even, you know, mix and match over here with different things. And what we can also do is maybe do this and all of a sudden look at that. So this is going to be our custom, well, trim material, right? The armor, the Alexandrite material. And we can even put this onto, well, I mean, that is not really going to look very well, but this is going to be fine. Or our custom one, maybe with a redstone. Eh, I don't I don't think that the custom one looks too good on our own, uh, you know, Alexandrite in this case. I think, you know, maybe this is going to work. I don't know. I don't think that that's going to necessarily look too good. Yeah, I don't think that that's too good. Maybe the custom armor trim is just not made, but, you know, I mean, this one, that is pretty freaking cool. So this is going to be our, um, basically the material with a, with a, with a vanilla pattern. And then this, I mean, come on, come on. That is a Taupen armor trim. I absolutely love it. And that is custom armor trims and a custom trim material added to Minecraft. Absolutely awesome. And there we go. As I've said already, all of the code as well as everything basically here is available down below in the description. But that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, that's when I'm going to add a custom item property. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.